Welcome to the Get Published Podcast, sponsored by Brody Consulting Group. To get more information about our publishing and coaching services, go to getpublishedpodcast.com. Hello, I am Paul Brody, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Get Published Podcast, where we help authors get published with a proven system that works. Today, we're being joined by Stephanie Fonin, author of A Sequestered Saga. Stephanie, welcome to the show. Hi, nice to speak with you. Are you ready to get started? I am. All right, question number one. What is the one piece of advice that you would give to a first-time author who is currently writes in their book? I, I think what's important is doing it two different ways. I don't tend to outline, but sometimes an outline does keep people focused. But for me, I find writing stream of consciousness works best for me. And then going back, and you know that's the beauty of computers, that you can go back and cut and paste and delete and move things around. And not to rush the process, but to also have, uh, have deadlines for yourself. I think that's important. And what do you feel is the hardest part about getting published? Well, in my case, an editor was assigned for the first book I wrote. It was um, a medical malpractice text. I find when you're using Vanity Press, if you're self-publishing, you really have to know a lot about graphics, about how, how to move things around, and stay focused on doing that. So for me, that's the cumbersome part. Um, if you try to edit your own work, I find that's very difficult because I can't tell you the number of times I thought the word become was a to- uh, was beneath. And of course, spell check isn't going to pick it up because it is the right word, but out of context, it doesn't come out co- quite correctly. Well, let's talk about marketing. So please share a marketing strategy that you've used in your book launch that worked well. Well, honestly, my favorite is speaking engagements. Um, A a sequestered saga in in particular is a a very sad, dramatic story. It's a a personal story to me. It's a World War II story um, that pertains to my own family, so it's easy for me to document. Uh, But I find that speaking engagements really help get the word out about your book and give you credibility. you know, if you go over to your local library, Barnes & Noble, any type of place like that, and offer to speak, you'd be surprised. Uh, most recently, when I spoke at the local library, I had three separate invitations to come in and speak about my book, which is absolutely going to result in sales as I go into a second edition. So you spoke at the library, and then out of that, you got three additional invitations to speak. Is that correct? Yes, and I and I did get several people asking me to buy the book. And then the other speaking engagements were, what locations were they at? Well, one of them was probably, well, they're, they're all different kinds, but one that I, I think I'm the most impressed with is that the actual library association asked me to speak at their annual meeting, which is a big deal. In addition to that, a genealogy uh, society invited me to speak. And lastly, a a local small community group asked me to come in. All right, let's talk about your favorite book. So what is your favorite book, and what was the number one thing that you learned from it? Um, I'll tell you that I liked a book called Sarah's Key. Uh, The author is Tatiana D. D. Rosny. I actually read it as part of a book club where I live. We have a book club, and it's not – I've never heard of the author before – Again, it's not that I'm obsessed with World War II. I had no idea that it was going to also be about the Holocaust. It's a fiction book, but what I like, it tends to be something I do when I write for people. It mixes fiction with history, so I guess that makes it historical fiction. So it it has a great storyline, but a lot of uh, facts to do with what was going on in a particular era of the company are there. So... That's what I learned about it, is to to mix research with fun stuff. I like doing that. And I like keeping readers on edge, not telling the whole story from the beginning, but kind of making them feel that you're, depending on what I'm writing, that that I'm letting them in on a secret and keeping the intrigue that way. And that's what was done in this book. And for our final question, what is your favorite quote and why? 
Uh, well, I'm going to go to Maya Angela. Angelou, she said, there is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside you. And I will tell you, I have had many sleepless nights where I think, oh my goodness, I need to write that down. And eventually I finally started keeping a pad by my bed because that's true. When you have an untold story, you feel like you need to tell the world, and that's something I like to do. Well, Stephanie, I want to thank you for being a guest on the show. What is the best way for people to find you online? I have my own website. It's rightfully, W-R-I-T-E-F-U-L-L-Y, inspired.com, because I truly believe that I'm lucky enough to be inspired in the right way. Well, Stephanie, I want to thank you once again for being a guest on the show, and I wish you all the best in your author journey ahead. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to speak with you. Thanks again for joining us today. To learn more about how to get your book published with a proven system that works, grab a free copy of my book at getpublishedpodcast.com.